choice of entity, taxation of income problem three. Asparagus operates a house cleaning business as a sole proprietorship. She oversees a team of 10 cleaning personnel, markets the business, and provides supplies and equipment. The business has been generating net taxable profits of $59,000 per year before considering the QBI or qualified business income deduction. As a sole proprietor, Asparagus qualifies for the 20% QBI deduction, reducing taxable income from the business to $47,200. Assume that Asparagus' marginal tax rate on ordinary income is 35% and has no pressing need for cash. Should Asparagus consider incorporating and operating the business through a C corporation? Assume a 21% corporate tax rate. Ignore any payroll or self-employment tax issues. How would your conclusion to the above question change if Asparagus' marginal tax rate were only 28%? This is one of my favorite problems because it kind of looks at the different entities in a more simple format, but really what we do when we look at choice of entity. Now, there's not one answer to, okay, what's the best entity for everybody? It really comes down to facts and circumstances. It's just about knowing what the benefits are, but this problem kind of shows you in certain situations mathematically, and depending on the facts and circumstances, it can help out even being a C corporation, especially if you can retain earnings and not have to pay out cash immediately. So we got this business, house clean business. It's currently a sole proprietorship. And I'll tell you in my practice with, with um, businesses, with different clients in the past, I see this all the time. Someone comes in, they're a sole proprietorship, but they know, hey, I know for from a liability standpoint, it's better to be a corporation or LLC or um, you know limited partnership. If I've got multiple owners or limited liability partnership, I should say, usually it's LLC and and partnership is what, or I'm sorry, LLC and corporation is usually what they're considering. They have more than one owner, okay? So they come in and they say, okay, I know, I've heard about the benefits of being a corporation or LLC from a liability standpoint, but, you know, I also need to worry about the tax issues. So what should I do? Should I be LLC, corporation? I'm a sole proprietorship now and I can't be that now just because of the, the liability, you know, the, the personal unlimited liability risk I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with. So that's completely understandable. Um, so this question is kind of looking at it in the lens of, okay, if you were operating a pass through like an LLC, what would happen? Or at least here, sole proprietorship would be the same consequences. Um, I guess you could have a single member LLC, which would be the same consequences here in this situation. In practice, when you have more than one owner, that's when it'd be considering an LLC with more than one owner. But here it's okay. Continue being a sole proprietorship versus being a C corporation is what we're doing. Okay. So we've got two different kind of questions and we're told, assume that asparagus' marginal tax rate on ordinary income is 35%. It's going to be important and has no pressing need for cash. That's important because if you're a C corporation, the second level of tax is when the cash is distributed out. So keep that in mind. Should asparagus consider incorporating and operating the business through a C corporation, assume a 21% corporate tax rate. Okay. And ignore personal, um, I'm sorry, payroll and self-employment tax issues, which that's important as well. So all we have to do here is just calculate what asparagus would pay on the profits right now, right? The $59,000 per year of taxable profits, considering the, um, that's before QBI deduction. So we need to take that into account. Okay. The QBI, considering the QBI deduction, what it would be. And with the, with the QBI deduction, we're told it's $47,200. So I actually calculate that for you. Make it even easier. Make it even easier. You could calculate this yourself by just taking 5,900, I'm sorry, 59,000 times 20% and basically subtracting it away from 59,000, you're going to get $47,200. You don't believe me? Go ahead and try it. And it equals $47,200. So look, I'm nice. I did it for you. So all I'm saying to do is basically compare the numbers. Sole proprietorship, if we were to continue to be a sole proprietorship, which by the way, if you're a single member LLC, the tax consequences would be the same, but you have the benefit of being an LLC from a liability standpoint. So I'm just going to throw that in there. So again, if someone was coming to me, that's probably what they would consider being a single member LLC, which just means you're one member, one owner. So sole proprietorship, if she continues doing that from a tax standpoint, you just take 47,200, which is the after QBI effect of the income times her marginal ordinary tax rate, which is 35%. And that's going to give us um, $16,520 of income tax that's owed each year, each of those years. 
$16,520 annually. Okay. And then on the other side, we've got a C corporation. Now remember C corporation has double taxation. Cue the evil empire music. But the good news here is we don't need to cue the evil empire music because this person has no pressing need for cash. And as many of you know, with the C corporation, the second level of tax comes into play where you have the distribution of cash. If you can plan it correctly and your business is able to just keep retaining the earnings for growth, like what she's doing, right? Maybe she's trying to grow the house cleaning business to make it a huge, huge, you know, business, then you don't need to pay out cash because maybe she, this is a, she's got other business ventures or she's an investor. She's got other cash coming for something else. Maybe it's a, this is a side operation. She has another job where she doesn't need the cash or maybe she's married to somebody and the other person's making tons of money. Maybe they're a medical doctor. She doesn't need it. She doesn't need the cash, right? She's trying to grow her business. So for C corporation, we don't take the $47,200 because remember the QBI deduction is not available for C corporations. That's the whole purpose of what it's about. I talk about that in previous videos in the QBI deduction. We take the $59,000 per year, but the, that's the bad news. All oh, right, got your hopes down. So 47,200 taxable income for sole proprietorship versus 59,000 for C corporation right there. Oh, not, not so good. But here's the good news is that C corporation lower rate, 21%. So if we take 59,000 times 21%, and again, this is the first level of tax is what the corporation, C corporation pays. That's going to be $12,390 annually of taxes. So just looking at these two numbers, the question is, should she be a C corporation or should she continue to be a sole proprietorship or be taxed like a single member LLC, which is a disregarded and treated like a sole proprietorship? And the answer is, you look at the two numbers and the answer is, okay, well, 12,390 is less and it's less by $4,130 per year. Okay. So savings equal $4,130 per year to be a corporation. So we guess be a C corporation. Yes, be a C corporation. So even if you were comparing S corporation versus C corporation, because an S corporation can have one owner as well, that would be the result. It'd be very similar. 16,520 in taxes versus 12,390. Okay. So those are the amounts of taxes. You've got 12,390 to be a corporation, C corporation, and then a 4130 savings, the difference between the two and that amount that savings, that's good. So I would say, yes, be a C corporation in that case. And then finally, how would your conclusion change, the above question change, if the marginal tax rate were only 28%? So basically what I'm saying now is just do 47,200 times 28% because at 35%, that's in the higher brackets. There's obviously lower brackets as well. So we just bring this down and we just use the same, we use a different rate. And in that case, now we've got um, 47,200 times 28%. Let's calculate that. That equals $13,216. And then again, it's going to be the same calculation for the C corporation because it's still 59,000 times 21%. That doesn't change. That rate is still going to be 21% based on our problems. And it still looks like being a C corporation is better. Now the tax savings in this case, so the savings here are only $826. So that's not that much if you're a C corporation, right? Because the taxes are going to be 13216 versus 12390 so you're still saying, yes, yes, be a C corporation. But remember, at some point in the future, she's probably going to want to take some type of distribution eventually. Even if the business keeps doing well and doing well and doing well, still, you're going to have to do that second level of tax, and then she's going to get that money and be subject to a 20% tax rate as a dividend, okay? Subject to 20% taxes. When you take that into account, then being a sole proprietorship is going to be, or single member, single member LLC or S corporation, that's a disregarded entity, right? In these cases, right, where you have one owner and it passes through is better. 
The idea, though, is that if you can push off recording that second level, it's actually more advantageous to be a C corporation in these cases. But the question is, how long can you go from pushing that off? Now, in the first variation of the question, okay, in the first variation, for $4,130 in savings, when you're talking about $12,000 versus $16,000 in taxes, you're talking about like a 25 to 30% change in taxes, right? 16,520, lowering that down to 12,390. Think about that percentage decrease in taxes. That's like um, 25%, close to a 25, around 25% reduction in your taxes to go from 16,520 to 12,390. But to go from 13,216 to 12,390 in the second situation, right? The second variation, so $826 of savings, is it worth that much, especially when you're eventually you're going to have to get that second level taxed, right? The, um, the chickens are going to come home to roost. Eventually, you're going to have to get hit with that second level tax. Well, so that's the question ultimately. Right now, it looks good, but there's going to be a second level, and that could actually end up being more in the future. I would say, well, how much is it worth that, that benefit today? And look at the first one. 25%, around 25% reduction in taxes, that's probably worth it, honestly. But the second situation, only just a you know a little bit of reduction, okay? Not even a, a 10% reduction in that case, right? 13,216 to 12,390. It's not even a 10% um, um, reduction. Um, it's not, I would say it's probably not worth it because you're gonna have that 20% reduction. I'm sorry, you're gonna have that 20% tax on your distributions eventually. So just keep that in mind. The I'm just really focusing on the numbers here and to show you that sometimes it can be mathematical. And like we see in the first variation, it's a no-brainer for many people in that case. And I would say that's probably smart. And by the way, you can always be a C corporation and then switch later to an S corporation or an LLC. You can switch. It's possible. Now, it is more challenging to go from C to, you know, C corporation, double taxation to, um, you know, to a pass-through entity, one level, than the opposite. To start off as a pass-through and then go to a C corporation, that is something that is more challenging. So keep that in mind. All right. So with that, make sure you go back, practice this. And again, we're just focusing on the savings and, and you see the, the changes there in this problem.